Ladies and gentlemen, the VFW National Commander-in-Chief, George Lasicki, and U.S. Senator John McCain. Senator McCain has earned the utmost respect of the veterans of foreign wars because he has been unwavering in his principles and because of his refusal to surrender them for the sake of political expediency. Long before some lawmakers were bent on assigning a timetable to withdrawal of U.S. forces in Iraq, and long before those same lawmakers were criticizing General Petraeus and his successful strategy of counterinsurgency, which included providing adequate troops to Iraq in order to fulfill that strategy, Senator McCain made his position clear. He warned that assigning a timetable to troop withdrawal would be perceived by those in uniforms as a sign that America's lawmakers have given up on them and their mission in Iraq. Senator McCain has maintained that if our allies believe we don't have the resolve to finish what we start, that it will send a clear signal to our enemies that America and Americans are weak. VFW agrees with Senator McCain. You can't support the troops without supporting their mission. May I present to you a life member of VFW Post 7401 in Chandler, Arizona, Senator John McCain. Never despair, Winston Churchill once said, and we did not despair. We were tested and we rose to the challenge. Some political leaders closed their eyes to the progress that the surge has made possible, and one only ought to argue about the past. But the question for the next president is not about the past, but about the future and how to secure it. I don't want to keep our troops in Iraq a minute longer than necessary to secure our interests there. Our goal is an Iraq that can stand on its own as a democratic ally and a responsible force for peace in its neighborhood. Our goal is an Iraq that no longer needs American troops. And I believe we can achieve that goal perhaps sooner than many imagine. But I do not believe that anyone should make promises as a candidate for president that they cannot keep if elected. To promise a withdrawal of our forces from Iraq, regardless of the calamitous consequences to the Iraqi people, our most vital interests, and the future of the Middle East is a height of irresponsibility. It is a failure of leadership. We will respect the sacrifices made by our soldiers. We all mourn the losses they have suffered in this war. But let us honor them by doing all we can to ensure their sacrifices were not made in vain. Let us show an appropriate humility by recognizing that so little is asked of us compared to the burdens we imposed on them. And let us show just a small but significant measure of their courage, resolve, and patriotism by putting our country's interests before every personal or political consideration. The sacrifices made by veterans deserve to be memorialized in something more lasting than marble or bronze or in the fleeting effect of a politician's speeches. Your valor and devotion to duty have earned your country's abiding concern for your welfare. And when our government forgets to honor our debts to you, it is a stain upon America's honor. As President, I will do everything in my power to ensure that those who serve today and those who have served in the past have access to the highest quality health, mental health, and rehabilitative care in the world. The disgrace of Walter Reed must not be forgotten. I believe that we should give veterans the option to use a simple plastic card to receive timely and accessible care at a convenient location through a provider of their choosing. I will not stand for requiring vet veterans to make an appointment, to stand in line, to make an appointment, to stand in line for substandard care of the injuries you have suffered to keep our country safe. 
Whatever our commitments to veterans cost, we will keep them, as you have kept every commitment to us. It's a privilege beyond measure to live in a country served so well by such selfless patriots. God bless and protect them. Thank you.